Now, I just love it when you see new cake decorating techniques online. And recently on Pinterest and Instagram, I've been seeing this trend where people are taking their cakes and turning them on their side. And this is becoming known as Cake Top Forward. Now, I have been dying to give this a try. So in this week's video tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this really fun cake where the top has become the front. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is prepare my cakes. Now for this cake, I'm using six inch cakes and I've actually baked three quarters of my vanilla sponge cake recipe. So this is gonna give me three layers that are around an inch in thickness each. Now when creating a cake like this, one of the most important things to think about is how your cake is going to stand up. So usually we would stack our cakes on top of each other and this would make them nice and sturdy. But for this cake, we're going to be using the top of the cake for the front. So we're going to be turning our cake over, which means the cake is going to be standing on its side. Because of this, you want to use enough cake to give you a nice width that that cake isn't just going to fall over. So for the filling and the covering of my cake, I'm going to be using some of my vanilla buttercream. I've colored it with the Color Mill rose color to give me this really pretty pink. Now I'm using buttercream, but you can also use a ganache if you would prefer. Now, even though the cake is going to be standing with the top facing forward, I'm going to start by icing my cake just as I normally would. So I'm going to place down my slices of cake and add a layer of buttercream between them. I'm then going to add a crumb coat around the outside. So I'm going in using my small spirit level just on the top, just to check that my cake is nice and level. This is gonna give me a nice straight front when I turn my cake over. Now, all a crumb coat is gonna do is just lock in any of those loose crumbs on the outside of our cake. So I'm just going in, applying some of that buttercream and just smoothing it down with my metal smoothing tool. Now, because we will be turning this cake on its side, I will actually need to crumb coat and cover the whole of my cake. But for now, I'm just doing the side and the top. Once I've added on the crumb coat, I'm then gonna pop my cake in the fridge just for that buttercream to firm up so that I can carry on. Okay, so when you take your cake out of the fridge and that buttercream has firmed up, there are two different ways that you can add your outer layer of buttercream around the outside. You could just put it on normally with your offset spatula and just use your smoothing tool to get it nice and smooth. I'm actually gonna use my acrylic discs and if you've seen my tutorial where I show you how to use these, I just love how easy is to get a nice sharp finish with acrylic discs. Now for this cake, because I'm using my acrylic discs, I can actually work on the back, the front and the sides at the same time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take a piece of parchment paper, release my cake from the cake board and I'm gonna flip this over so that I can first add a crumb coat onto the back. Because my buttercream is nice and firm where it's been in the fridge, it's not gonna ruin the buttercream on the other side. Okay, so now all of my cake has been covered. I'm just gonna pop this back in the fridge for that crumb coat on the back to firm up. Now we're ready to add our final coating of buttercream around our cake. So I've got my two six inch acrylic discs and these ones just measure six and a quarter inches. I've cut out two discs of parchment paper and these are just slightly smaller than the discs themselves, just to give us a little bit of wiggle room. I'm gonna add a small amount of buttercream onto my discs to stick down this parchment paper. Now, whilst you've had your cake firming up in the fridge, you might find that you get a lot of air bubbles build up in your buttercream. Using a spatula, just push it against the side of your bowl just to burst any of those bubbles. And this is gonna give you a nice smooth buttercream to use on your cake. So I'm gonna start just by applying a layer of buttercream onto that top. And you wanna get this as nice and smooth as you possibly can. And I'm just letting some of that buttercream hang over the edge. I'm then gonna take the first of my acrylic discs, turn this over so the parchment paper is facing down and just stick that to the top of my cake. Now, this is actually gonna be the back of my cake. So as I did before, I wanna flip this over. And this is how, by using the acrylic discs, we're gonna be able to do the front and the back at the same time. Now, I'm gonna place down a small amount of non-slip mat. Grab another one of my glass boards, or if you've got a cake board or an acrylic board, and 
flip that over and then peel off that piece of parchment paper and I'm gonna do exactly the same. So I'm gonna add a layer of buttercream onto the top of my cake and get this nice and smooth as this is gonna be the front of my cake when we turn it on its side. I'm then gonna again take my disc flip that over. You then want to use your smoothing tool just to make sure they're lined up together. Take my buttercream, start by pulling that buttercream up to the top disc, just fill in that space at the top of the cake. These discs are also great to use as we're going to get a perfect circle. I'm then going to go around the bottom and do exactly the same and then go in and put the buttercream all the way around the outside just as I would if I was icing a cake without my discs. I'm then going to run around with my scraping tool just taking off the excess buttercream. If there are any gaps I can just go in and fill these with buttercream before running around a few times just smoothing that down until I'm happy with the finish. Once you're happy with how that's looking I'm going to scrape off any excess from the top of the disc and just pop this in the fridge for around an hour so that I know that that buttercream is completely firm. We can then remove the discs and prepare it for turning it on its side. Once that buttercream has firmed up and I've taken my cake out of the fridge, I'm gonna remove that acrylic disc from the top. So I'm just taking a really small offset spatula and sliding it so it goes on top of that parchment paper and remove that parchment. Go in and just neaten up any areas around that edge if they need it. I'm then gonna release my cake from the bottom disc. Now, before I stand it up, I want to take some of my cake from the bottom. Now, if we leave it like this, you're not going to have a base for your cake to stand up on. So we need to chop some of the cake off. Now, it really depends on how you want your cake to look. I'm going to try and cut the minimum amount I can off so that I can keep most of my circle. So I'm going to come up around a centimeter and a half and just start by putting a guide mark. Once you've got your guide mark, you then want to go in with your knife and just push straight down. So you want that cut to be at a right angle so that your cake will sit straight. I'm then going to bring in my cake board and I'm using a 10 inch masonite board. So this one is five millimeters in height and is covered in this matte white finish. Now on the center, I'm going to pop down a small amount of buttercream. I'm then going to be using quite a wide spatula. So I'm going to start by lifting off my cake from my glass board and I still have that acrylic disc underneath which is what I'm holding and I'm going to tilt my cake onto my spatula. Now when you lift your cake you want to make sure that you're going across all three layers. Take off that acrylic disc and peel back that parchment paper. I can then sit my cake in the center of my board. The great thing with these masonite boards is I'm just going to clean up any buttercream. Now on the back where we've taken off that parchment paper, go in and just neaten that up just as we did on the front. But we're going to have to do this one whilst it's already standing. And I'm carefully going around the edge, just taking off any excess. Okay, so here we have our little arch cake so far. Now you can either leave it plain or I'm going to add a small amount of detail. So first of all, I've got this stencil. Now this is the Fallen Vine stencil by Lizzie Lou. I'm gonna do this using the same color buttercream as the buttercream on our cake. So I'm just gonna carefully line this up on the front of my cake, just getting some of that pattern overlapping the edge and just run over with a thin layer over the top, just smoothing it out. I can then peel off my stencil and here we've got this really delicate pattern of these vines just coming down from the top. So I'm gonna keep my cake quite simple and have a stem of leaves going up the front and I'm going to create these using wafer paper. So this is just a sheet of A5 white wafer paper or it's also known as rice paper and you may have seen me use this in my wafer paper cake decorating tutorial a few weeks ago. You're also going to need some wire so I've got a long piece of wire and I've cut some into smaller pieces so these are around three inches in length. 
Now this is 24 gauge wire and it's already been covered in this white floral tape. I've then got some additional white floral tape and I've cut out a small template just in the shape of a leaf and this one measures just over an inch in diameter. You're then going to need a small amount of water and a paintbrush. So the first thing I want to do is cut out some of my leaf shapes. So I'm trimming down some of my rice paper once you have a selection of the leaves I'm going to take my first one along with my piece of wire now I'm going to really carefully just bend my leaf not folding it putting a slight bend in there I can then take some water and I'm going to paint this on the end of my leaf on both sides now when wafer paper gets damp or wet it starts to go sticky as that wafer paper is starting to dissolve take my wire just place this on the end and just turn that slightly just to stick that on. I'm then gonna place that down and just allow that to dry. Once it dries, that wafer paper is gonna to return to being nice and hard and it will have stuck to my wire. So I'm gonna do this for a few of my leaves and I'm gonna leave these to dry for around 15 minutes. Once they have been left, they're now nice and secure. So I've got my shorter lengths of wire and also my longer piece. So with the shorter pieces, bending them around a 45 degree angle, and I want some going left and some going right. I'm then going to take my longer piece and I've also got some of my white floral tape. Now with floral tape, if you pull it, that's going to activate the gum. Dip your fingers in some water and just coat that on the end as this is going to help it stick. I'm going to start to wind this onto my longer stem and when I've come down around half a centimetre, I'm going to take my first leaf and place that in on one side, wrap that round a few times and put one in, just coming out from the other side. And once I've come down around another centimeter, add another one in. And I'm gonna continue down, just adding them in on each side. You can then go in, pulling those leaves around until you're happy with their position. Now, the great thing about using wafer paper and our floral tape is you could leave them white or you can go in with some petal dust over the top just to add a little bit of color. And I'm gonna trim this down. Now, I'm not gonna be pushing this into my cake. I just wanna push it against my cake. So here we have the finished cake, which looks like this almost circle, which has become known as the cake top forward, or just simply an arch cake. Now, I did actually add two more of the leaves to the bottom of our stem, just to finish it off so that those leaves went all the way to the bottom. This is such a fun technique. I would suggest if you're gonna try it yourself, to Keep your cake quite small and make sure your cake is wide enough so it's not going to fall over. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and will be able to use it if you want to give this technique a try yourselves. Let me know in the comments, have you made one of these cakes and what did you think? Now I will put a list of all the tools that I've used in today's video in the description below. So until next time, bye!